Hello everyone, welcome back. We have finally made it to the day two of the Pokemon 2020 Malmo Regional Championships. I'm joined by my good friend and co-caster. Co Co-costa. Co-costa. <laughs> Co-caster. Uh, Costa. We're going to jump straight into the top eight bracket though. Yes. Uh, going to waste no time. Let's get this day two underway. Uh, have a quick look at who's made it to the final day two standings in that single elimination bracket and then we'll get straight into the match. Indeed. Right, so we do have the bracket right in front of us right now, as you can see on the display. We have Tobias uh, Kaczynski against Jamie Boy, Eric Rios against Alex Gomez. So we've got an all-round Spanish battle right over there. We've got Alexandre Lissardi versus Leonardo Bonanomi and Matty Morgan against uh, Fevzi Ozcan, of which we will be streaming, actually, right now live. Exactly that. So uh, lots of really top quality matches going on and one of the probably uh, one of the strongest top cut brackets I've seen uh, Very true. really in, in uh, many years. You've Definitely. got people like Eric and Alex playing <coughs> against each other and these two Spaniards have been... Uh, absolutely at the top level of competition yes unfortunately very good friends yes and, uh, they, they play very well together but uh, unfortunately up against each other in the top eight and uh, something that we've seen before as well i think we had a, a yep. top four showing from them uh, in a previous tournament uh, tobias being first seed of course making yes. it that all important <coughs> eight and O oh in day one something uh, so that's so hard to actually accomplish every single time absolutely yep. and, uh, jamie boyd managing to squeak his way in <laughs> uh, with an x2 record yeah, as did. well so uh, fantastic play from both of these players looking forward to showcasing one of them in the top four matches in the next round definitely um and leonardo who we saw yesterday yes uh, up against alexandre who uh, not somebody that I, we've seen too regularly True. in the Top Cut streams, yep. but uh, going to be good to see who makes it towards that top four mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be able to showcase a little bit later on today. Definitely. And uh, finally, we do have the streamed feature match that we did just mention uh, right before. Uh, Matty Morgan versus Fevzi Osgan coming right up. We do have Fevzi's uh, player profile, uh, profile popping up right now. Um, uh, of course, you can see the achievements of which we did go over yesterday, but we'll go over again. Um, uh, Frankfurt Regional Top 16, Cannes Special Event, uh, Top 8, World's Day 2 Competitor. And those are all just in 2019. And we do have Colm Regionals Top 8 in 2020. So obviously a lot of recent achievements, but so, so solid just shows that sheer amount of consistency. We do have the team that he notably did bring yesterday as well. The Togekiss, Lapras, Incineroar, uh, Al Creamy, um, uh, Dusclops, and Conkelda. Indeed, so uh, great team there from Fevzi. So uh, switching over to Matty, our Irish representative. Yes. Um, and uh, he is a player that, again, we've not seen too much of in the top cut stage. Yep. Um, we were talking to him earlier, and this is his top cut, first top cut regionals for quite a while now. Yes. So uh, brilliant to be able to showcase Matty here. Definitely. Uh, he's bringing a team of Durant, Tyranitar, Toracat, Milotic, Sylveon, and Goffitel. So uh, quite an interesting team, and uh, <coughs> it seems like he didn't quite manage to... Uh, Evolve his Toracat into Incineroar, making no, a slightly actually. different decision here. Yeah, it was actually really, really interesting. I mean, it, the Toracat does actually have a, a higher base speed, to be honest, uh, compared to the Incineroar, whilst also only having the monotype of fire instead of Incineroar's fire dark type. So it is able to completely resist the fairy types, if there are any, opposing him. Indeed, that. So uh, it looks like we're just having a couple of little uh, connection issues, just making sure these players are connected up and ready to go. Yes. Um, but while we're waiting for that to happen, yep. yeah, how, how do you feel uh, these teams match up against each other? I mean, to, to be honest with you, um, I find them quite interesting. We did see that um, Fevzi did have the Lapras kind of core drawing out yesterday. Um, he's a bit more tankier, as we can see in the actual team preview popping up right now. Um, uh, we've got... I don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know, Fevzi does have a bulkier team, right? You see Matty's team, and he does have that Duran Milotic that we have seen really, really strong as well in this format, especially in, like, other notable regionals like Collinsville or even Dallas, too. And um, it, he's going mainly for uh, offense whilst having uh, Pokemon such as uh, Tyranitar. He's got the uh, uh, 
Sylveon, the Gothitelle most notably too, with that Shadow Tag ability, being able to both have Fake Out, but also trap his opponent's Pokemon in if they are not Ghost types. Indeed, and Dusclop's going to be able to switch out, yep. which is quite good for Fevzi. Maybe he decides to go for a Trick Room strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, then he's able to switch his Dusclops out into something that may be a bit more threatening to Matty's team. Definitely. But of course, we saw Fevzi on stream yesterday, mm -hmm. and he's no stranger to be able to be doing some damage. Uh, that Alcremi was doing a lot of work wow, on the stream yesterday, yeah. uh, supporting that Lapras. Um, and supporting the other members of his team, mm -hmm. making sure they're doing as much damage as, po as possible. Of course, we've seen Lapras so many times yesterday <laughs> as well. Yeah. And e as, as much as uh, that Lapras has been doing a lot of damage, we've mm -hmm. seen quite a lot of weakness policy coming out. Yes. It's no stranger to being able to make your team take hits with that G-Max resonance. It really, really isn't, especially because you do have the Decorate and the Fake Tears uh, tech of which we had mentioned earlier. Um, uh, yesterday, sorry, in yesterday's stream. So really, really strong uh, <laughs> actual strategies. We are going to see the Tyranitar and Sylveon coming out from Matty's side, whilst the Lapras and Dusclops lead comes out from Fevzi's. Indeed. So uh, it would be interesting to see how this Lapras and Tyranitar match up on uh, between Fevzi and Matty. Uh, you've got the ability for Lapras to go straight for a G-Max Resonance here mm -hmm. uh, if Fevzi wants to do that. But, uh, you know, whether or not that will be able to go before the Tyranitar, yep. uh, maybe help that Dusclops take a big, powerful Dark-type attack. Yep. Uh, from Tyranitar on Matty's side of the field, if it is that Fevzi wants to go down that Trick Room strategy. Yep. Uh, of course, Matty has that Sylveon on the field, and Sylveon is known for being quite a slow Pokemon, as is Tyranitar. Yep. Uh, and so, whether or not Fevzi is able to really capitalize yep. on uh, his Trick Room with Matty having such slow threats, mm -hmm. things like that Kinkeldor and Fevzi side of the field is going to be very, very pressured by that Sylveon. Yeah, and we do actually see the Dusclops switch out turn one in for the Incineroar on Fevzi's side, uh, being able to actually get that Intimidate off onto the Tyranitar, not so much as useful onto the Sylveon. We did actually see its item being frisked from Dusclops, uh, displaying the Throat Spray and Tyranitar ha having the Weakness Policy too. And we're actually going to see the first Dynamax of the set. Yep, absolutely wasting no time. It's this G -Max, Gigantamax <laughs> Lapras coming out absolutely again. Uh, yep. Likely here going to be going for a G Max Resonance yes. and uh, using that to set up the Aurora Veil that we've seen so many times in previous formats. And oh. there it is. There it is, straight off the bat. Um, Lapras does go for that G Max Resonance. Straight onto the Sylveon, being able to take it down to just under half HP uh, through a critical hit, of course. <laughs> I was going to say, Sylveon's quite bulky on the specially defensive side, so that was a big hit. And um, being able to actually set up the Aurora Veil, whilst we do see the Sylveon go straight for the Yawn into the Lapras slot, and the Rock Slide does come out from the Tyranitar, uh, being at minus one attack, of course, but being able to get some chip damage both on the Incineroar and on the Lapras. Indeed, as all Pokemon take that little bit of sand chip damage uh, coming in from the Tyranitar setting up the sand stream. Uh, quite a good turn there for Fevzi, being able to attack first, yep. making sure that uh, that G-Max Resonance came out before any other attacks went on the board. Yes. Uh, but Matty making a really good play there, mm -hmm. making sure that that uh, Lapras was going to be going to sleep. Yep. Uh, at the end of this turn, if Lapras doesn't switch out, oh, and that's exactly what we see from Fevzi there, we there go. it's done its job. Wow, it really, really has. And we did actually see there was no weakness policy proc coming out from uh, except uh, receiving the super effective uh, hit from the Rock Slide. Um, once again, we do see Frisk coming out from Dusclops, revealing the items we've already checked out before. Fake Out does come out from Incineroar into the Sylveon, taking just a bit more chip damage. And the Rock Slide once again does come out from the Tyranitar, being able to bring the Incineroar down to just under half of its HP. Indeed, and the Dusclops has come back into here where it started. Uh, the only difference this time is that G-Max Resonance and Aurora Veil vale is yes, on the field. So exactly. uh, Dusclops is going to be pretty free to be able to set up that trick room if Fevzi wants to and uh, that's probably why he brought it in yep. made sure that the uh, both the yawn wasn't in effect on his Lapras making sure that that was there later in the game of course you don't want to waste any of your Dynamax or Gigantamax turns but normally uh, better no. that they're not asleep than uh, than asleep very very true I mean you might as well get the Aurora Veil as much as you can as well on top of it we do see a Hyper Voice coming out from the Sylveon does activate its own Throat Spray into also the uh, uh, Incineral slot, which did swap out for the Lapras. We do see a superpower coming out from the Tyranitar, still being at minus one, but 
dealing some good damage, mm. to be honest, even through the Aurora Veil. And we do see a Trick Room being set up from the Dust Clubs on Fevzi's side. Indeed, and that Tyranitar being at minus two is something that Matty's not going to be happy about. But equally, yep. that Sylveon's at plus one now. It's going to be able to throw out some really powerful Hyper Voice. Oh, definitely. Of course, we saw turn one, that Lapras went before both Tyranitar and the Sylveon. So uh, while uh, fevzi has been able to switch it in, maybe preserve that Incineroar for another turn, yep. that Lapras is now under significant threat from both the Tyranitar and the Sylveon. And of course, both Pokemon have those spread attacks. They can damage both Pokemon on yep. Fevzi's side of the field and so uh, there's going to need to be a little bit of adjustment over these uh, over the next turn just to make sure that Fevzi is in a position to put some pressure back on Matty who's just been able to keep dishing out consistent damage. Exactly and actually we do see Sylveon could potentially be in range of a Nightshade so uh, Matty does really have to be careful of that but we do actually see the Lapras, uh, Lapras sorry, swap out for the Contelda. The Sylveon does go for that protect potentially fearing that Nightshade if it does come out and of which we do see comes out straight from the Dust Clubs into that protected slot on Sylveon and the Superpower once again coming out from the Tyranitar now taking it down to minus three attack and minus two defense. Indeed a really clever switch in here for Fevzi uh, you know if the Sylveon isn't in wasn't in Nightshade range before uh, definitely is now yep. um, so yeah nice nice clever switch there from Fevzi and of course now the Kinkelda is pressuring that to Tyranitar, which as you said was at minus two uh, stages of defense from that yes. superpower and so Matty's got to readjust now it looked like the shoe was on the other foot but yeah. uh, uh, the the moment now it's down to Matty to uh, maybe protect his Tyranitar maybe decide that the Tyranitar's done its job for the match yeah. uh, potentially the Sylveon's done its job for the match we'll have to see what Matty Very decides true. is important going through for the last few turns of uh, Trick Room and yep. making sure that if he can get to the end of Trick Room, mm -hmm. he's got enough resources left to push through the rest of Fevzi's team. Yeah, definitely, because, I mean, we do see that um, there is a potential for both Pokemon to go down right now in this turn, just like you correctly mentioned. And we do actually see the Tyranta uh, switching out for the Gothitelle on Matty's side, with the Sylveon going for a quick attack onto the Contelda, just wanting to get some vital chip damage as much as possible onto it before it does go down to this Nightshade coming out from Fevzi's Dustclops. So now Matty down one Pokemon, uh, remaining three, and a Drain Punch coming out from Gothitelle, uh, sorry, from Contelda into the Gothitelle slot, being able to get some HP damage whilst dishing out some uh, uh, chip damage as well. We do actually see the Life Orb on top of that from the Contelda, as we mm. did correctly mention on yesterday's stream. Indeed, and a uh, good play there by Matty. If you're going to let the Sylveon go down, yeah. you might as well get the last little bit of value so out of it. So, yeah, uh, yeah great play there. Uh, Durant coming in for Matty, and with two turns of Trick Room left, you've got to be thinking, how is this going to be matching up? Uh, I'm not sure if we saw from Fevzi's side of the field where uh -huh. the Dusclops had access to that Will-O-Wisp yesterday. Um, uh -huh. But if that's the case, then uh, Matty's got to be quite, quite worried that uh, his Durant's going to be uh, stopped from doing all of the damage it wants to do. Definitely uh, of true. course, we're in a position where Fevzi's <coughs> used his Gigantamax already. Yes. Uh, Matty was able to capitalize on the yawn pressure there exactly. and stop it from happening. But Matty is yet to Dynamax. Yeah. Uh, and Durant is exactly the Pokemon. If you're going <laughs> to Dynamax something yeah. on Matty's team, uh, it's definitely Durant that you want to be Dynamaxing. And we've seen definitely. how much damage that uh, that does to opposing Pokemon. And talking about Dynamaxing, <laughs> we actually do see it come out from Matty's side only a few turns into the game. Not a bit of worries, but correctly strategically placed. So Durant does Dynamax, gain that Dynamax form of which it can dish out loads and loads of damage. Um, uh, so the question will be now, what is Gothdell 2? Does it try to go for Fate Out onto Contelda? It doesn't. No Fate Out comes out. We do see Pain Split coming out from Dustclops, sharing its pain with <laughs> Gothdell. Whilst we do see Drain Punch coming out, being able to take the Gothdell down to nearly one fourth worth of HP and um, being able to recover some HP back, obviously losing some once again to the Life Orb Recoil. A Max Steel Spike coming out from the Durant straight into the Dustclops slot, being able to take it down to just under 50 HP whilst raising its defense and Gothitelle's as well on Matty's side. 
Uh, the big question here is Goffitel sets up the trick room. There we go. Uh, it, well, there we go. <laughs> there we uh, go. We're no longer in trick room. <laughs> Two no turns longer. left of trick room, no That's longer. Um, so great play there by Matin. Uh, Fevzi obviously was reading that that may be a complete threat and uh, doubling down into the Goffitel, but didn't quite have the firepower to uh, deal enough damage. And of course, uh, now Dusclops has taken all of that additional chip damage from the Max Steel Spike. Likely that another Max Steel Spike is yep. going to be able to pick up the knockout on mm -hmm. Dusclops, further raise the defense of both Goffitel and Durant and make Kinkeldor uh, not really able to do all too much damage to both Pokemon. Yeah. Of course, Fevzi still does have that Incineroar in the back. It True. could be a very potential switch mm -hmm. in here. So maddie has got to decide whether he wants to make the read that Dusclops is going to switch out into Incineroar uh -huh. or maybe and maybe go for something like a Max Quake, which is something that we've seen yeah. from Durant previously. As we see, Dusclops <laughs> does switch out. <laughs> Has Matty made the read here? Is this Incineroar wow. going to go this down could be on the big. switch in? This could be really big. We do see the Incineroar coming in, being able to get an Intimidate off onto the Dusclops most notably. And what does the Dusclops do? It does go for the Max Steel Spike. It doesn't go for the Max Quake. It went more for the safe for option but oh, oh my lord what was oh. that was that a crit that was a, a crit that had hit. to be a critical hit oh my god wow who needs okay. coverage anyway <laughs> when <laughs> durant's doing things like that and now matty's <laughs> wow. been able to remove that incineroar wow. from the field oh and my. the biggest threat to durant in this game yeah well i mean it is also accompanied with its life orb uh <laughs> further boosting its damage <laughs> we do see a side coming out from the drostel into the contelda slot being able to get some good notable chip damage onto it the uh contelda does retaliate at least it tries with the thunder punch isn't able to actually pick up the knockout onto that Goffitel. Yeah, not only a knockout from the Max Steel Spike there, the critical hit, you've got <laughs> another stage of raised defense oh, wow. on Matty's side of the field. Now, this Intimidate Ooh. could be quite uh, quite uh, significant now. Uh, the Dust Clops didn't quite, t was just about in just range about of in the range, Max Steel yeah. Spike before. It uh, doesn't look like it is again, so uh, Matty's going to have to double down into this Dust Clops yep. to make sure he picks up the KO. Uh, hopefully he's identified that and he'll uh, follow it through, but yep. of course, you know, you, you, you never know whether it's just the Conkelda that wants to be taken down by yep. Uh, Matty and just make sure that that's off the field as the main threat to Tyranitar on Matty's side. Very true and um, we did see actually due to Dusclops first the Kaseeb Berry being on the Dothertail it could actually be able to pick up the knockout onto Dusclops if it does have Helping Hand but we do see the Dusclops uh, return back to its Pokeball in favour of the Lapras and we do see a Helping Hand coming out from the Dothertail into the Duran hoping to try to pick up that Dusclops Wow, that does love slot, but it is still being able to take out the Lapras that did switch in whilst boosting its defense to plus three against a Contelda, which is more on the physical side, most definitely. Um, uh, what does the Contelda do? It does try to go for the Thunder Punch. Will Dustel survive because of that plus three? It does <laughs> wow and that of course is uh, that is just big i'm sorry uh, absolutely <laughs> really huge and of course the aurora veil has now worn off yes so no more helping hand required here exactly. to uh, pick up the uh, ko on dusclops that has just come in uh, we see the life orb and the cassie berry again coming out from frisk yeah uh, information that fevzi already has mm -hmm. to take into game two definitely uh, so here we have the probably the psychic coming out from Goffitel onto that Kinkeldor to finish the job there. Uh, Dusclops likely to go down to an Iron Head. Uh, but of course, Durant back in its normal form uh, has that hustle oh. ability and all <laughs> of its moves uh, are not quite as accurate as it like uh, potentially like. So, yep. uh, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And, yes. Uh, it may <laughs> be that uh, Fevzi's able to just protect his Kinkeldor, get that trick room up and try to uh, push through in a slightly different way. Praying to the almighty orange Jesus <laughs> is th a requirement right now coming from Fevzi's side because he is hoping for a hustle miss. We do actually see Gothitelle swap out straight for the Tyranitar on Matty's side, being able to set up the Sandstream right now due to his ability, of course, the Sandstorm. And we see a Mac Punch coming up from the Contelda into the Tyranitar slot, being able to pick up the straight KO 
just as that Tyranitar decided to show its face. And um, of course, getting some life orb. Chip damage, wow! That Iron Head does actually miss, which is vital. It's literally what we just spoke of and mentioned with the hustle ability, uh, allowing Dusclops to actually get the Trick Room set up. But of course, the Contelda actually went down to Sandstorm and Life Orb recoil damage. So, what is this Dusclops gonna do right now? It's oh, set it up the Trick Room, but. Indeed, uh, you know, Nightshade is a, a great move. It does consistent damage and, of course, uh, has the ability to uh, be immune to fake out due yeah. to its ghost typing. True. So, uh, can knock out the Gothitelle this <laughs> turn. Uh, can decide to just go for a pain split on Durant, make sure True. it gets some HP back. Uh, and is able to uh, maybe survive another Iron Head, maybe survive maybe a, 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 a Psychic, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a Mist coming maybe out. Miss. We've already seen one, and uh, more can definitely come. Definitely. Uh, I think it's likely that the Gothitelle needs to be targeted down this turn. We already saw it uh, reverse the Trick Room there. And of course, the win condition here for Fevzi is that that Durant keeps on missing its moves. Yeah. Uh, but of course, more chance that you're going to be in a better spot if the if you're outside of or inside of Trick Room yep. instead of outside, and we actually see the Nightshade coming out straight into the Dothel. I think Fevzi's really relying on this mess right now. He's really praying for it to happen. Will it happen? It doesn't happen, unfortunately, for Fevzi, but he does survive Ooh. on three HP, but does get taken down to the Sandstorm damage. Wow, that really could have gone either way. It really could wow. have done. And a great end game there for, from game. Matty, using that sand stream to such great effect. Yep. And of course, all of these residual bits of damage mm -hmm. all add up. Of course, Fevzi had that life orb on Kinskelder. Yes. All of these things make a difference. Definitely. And, uh, you know, Fevzi wanted to, was in a position where the Mac Punch was the right thing to knock out that Goffitelle mm -hmm. um, in the turn that he used it. Yes. But of course, uh, Matty seeing through that, make, seeing that uh, that Kinkelda was likely in range of going down to a combination of life orb damage yep. from the Mac Punch yep. plus that Sandstream that's damage. It. And that's exactly what happened. So exactly. really clever play there from Matty. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what comes out in game two. Yep. And speaking of game two, uh, what do you think we'll see maybe adjusting from uh, Fevzi here? Uh, Fevzi right now, I mean, it's just he he did um, actually only take advantage of one uh, Gigantamax turn. Um, obviously, it was to try to set up his whole team with the Aurora Veil on his side, being able to withstand more of this damage, being able to cycle in the Incineroar to get further um, uh, advantage to his end and reduction on Maddie's side um, uh, of damage and output. But at the same time, can he try to take advantage and utilize Dynamax or Gigantamax turns as much as possible? Maybe I think he should. He really need, needs to take advantage of this such a strong mechanic, especially in the new games. Indeed, and you know, the, the big question is, is is he is Fevzi able to dispatch that uh, yes. Sylveon yep. uh, so early in the game? Mm -hmm. We saw Lapras outsped it in game one. Yep. Uh, that is only half the battle, and especially since GMAX Residence did about 50% of damage, is literally half of yeah. the battle. So. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> oh, critical exactly. hit, of critical course. Critical hit, you gotta critical remember, hit. yeah. Um, and so, you know, Fevzi's, if Fevzi wants to remove that Sylveon mm -hmm. from play, remove the threat of that Yawn, yep. uh, he's gonna be able to have to lead something other than that Dusclops uh, with the Lapras or one of his other Pokemon in yep. order to make sure that happened. Uh, these players are just getting connected, so. Yes. Uh, Sorry about the delay here, everyone. I We're think, just going to uh, yeah. uh, just keep, uh, just keep, keep going. Hopefully keep we'll get going. connected <laughs> and uh, we can get back to the, uh, Honestly, back to the game. Honestly, I think it's the sheer intensity of game one that's actually thrown all of the hardware off. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe some of that Sandstream <laughs> sandstorm oh. got, in the, uh, got into the switches. I see you. I see you. Yeah, I'll agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so I mean, really, really intense and exciting game, especially to commentate. I know it definitely will be for viewing as well on top of that. I mean, I just I just love the setup right now. We've got Fevzi with his really durable tanky team against Matty, where he's got this powerhouse of an offensive team. Obviously, mm. he's got different modes to it, but that Durant there really showing off why it is the, such a good Pokemon, especially in this format. I mean, Dynamax just makes it even more viable. Like, I mean, sure, you had the hustle worries. You don't need that anymore. Exactly. You don't need to worry yeah. for three yeah. turns. Yeah, I mean, you get 
all of the boost with none yeah. of the negatives that go alongside no, it. And, no. and that's just so good. And yeah. there's a reason that it's been seen in pretty much every single finals uh, since the VGC 2020 season started. Yep. Uh, we missed out on it in Bochum, but yep. we had it in the Oceania International Championship finals. Mm -hmm. uh, we had it in Collinsville uh, last weekend, at the regional championships, yes. I believe. Yep. Um, and we had it in Dallas making the finals of the regional making championships the there. Yep. Uh, so a couple of places in the US, also in Oceania. Yeah. Uh, Durant's definitely traveling this season. <laughs> That's for sure. It's a little ant, but it's got a lot of power. I mean, and it's got a lot of travel mileage as well. But I mean, it's, it's <laughs> that was a bad one. I know it was a bad that one. I tried. One. I did try, bad. but it's okay. Yeah, got to deal with it. You know, uh, and, and this, is the, this is the great thing about going into the VGC 2020 format. Yep. And especially since we've moved on from Series 2 to Series 3, mm -hmm. uh, a couple more Pokemon are allowed. A couple more Gigantamax forms are yep. allowed, most of which we've seen now we have. Um, through this tournament. But, of course, Durant's still making it to the top tables. And so, you know, it, it's a real testament to when the rules change, uh -huh. what Pokemon remain relevant? What Pokemon do you continue seeing? Uh, That's true. A Pokemon that we had in Bokken that we haven't seen today at all, or sorry, yesterday at yes. all, is Mudsdale. That is uh, very that true. made it to the finals very and even... Point. Uh, clinched the win in series two but yeah. i don't think i've spoken to anybody that's even seen or used it in this tournament I, this weekend i'll actually agree with you i mean because we have seen like maybe a few grim snarls as well where uh, mudsdale does really like being paired up with grim snarl mm. maybe it has that own tempo self swagger kind of strategy too but mudsdale has different ways it could go about its business because it does have that av makes it super durable um it could just last forever as long as it gets its boosts up, to be honest, yeah. but maybe it's the insertion of all these critical hit kind of strategies uh, that have kind of like deterred it. And then you got G-Max Lapras, right? A G-Max Lapras has got to make such a difference it, to it these does. things. It, it naturally does, because yeah. why would Mudsdale want to show its uh, pretty little face in a format right now that has a G-Max La uh, Lapras being able to set up Aurora Veil, go through uh, weakness policy strategies such as self-proccing Rock Tomb, you've got Brick Break, <laughs> even though Brick Break might not be the best yeah, <laughs> after a G-Max Resonance, but before it, setting it up, it should be good. Um, so understandably, I think Mudsdale's a bit scared to come out, especially at mm. this time of the format. We've just, Lapras has just been rocking this um, format, I think, oh, no, format, this day, this event, should I say, so far with usage stats. It has indeed, and uh, you know, one of the things it has access to is Body Press, and Body Press is one of the yeah. new moves that we've seen all over VGC 2020 yes. so far. Yep. I haven't seen too much of it this weekend. No, but no. Uh, and again, you know, slightly surprising mm -hmm. given that the uh, G-Max resonance from Gigantamax Lapras, which has been so common, yep. you know, that's the sort of thing that you want to be using, those strong fighting type attacks, the sure. strong electric type attacks. Uh, we saw how effective that... Uh, uh, Lapras was in yesterday's match that mm -hmm. had uh, access to oh, Max Lightning, yeah. was, oh, was able really to, good. you know, counter <laughs> itself, so to speak. It was, um, it actually was. And, you know, seeing these players tech on these yep. kind of uh, strategies and ways to deal with uh, such a bulky Pokemon, of course, Aurora Veil, as yes. we've mentioned, um, is a big threat as well to just allow you p to play so much more aggressively because sure. hey you know you're not going to be taking your opponent's not going to be taking the same knockouts that they've maybe prepared for mm -hmm. anymore because you've got that aurora veil in play oh yeah i mean the calculations at some point do go out of the window because there are certain things that you have prepared for but then there are so many other things you won't even realize that you haven't prepared for and this is what we're starting to see with um the introduction of different ways of being able to play this pokemon um no, mo most notably, I do believe, and you could quote me if I'm wrong, that the only um, special attack um, uh, electric type uh, move that Lapras gets is Thunder. So we're seeing Thunder strats coming out, right? And that has extra damage, of course, in Dynamax form. But also, most notably, whilst you get set, uh, you set up your own range yes, through Max Geyser, yes, yes, you take yes. advantage of the 100% accurate Thunders. So. I mean, it's so cool. It's just so cool. Yeah. It, it's a Pokemon that sets itself up as long as you're able to just get. I mean, because it's still going to take a hit, right? Even if you can't self proc it. Uh, it's weakness policy if it does have it, of course. Right now, we have seen Fezzi doesn't have it, so we're not actually sure what item he has, to be fair, because I don't think it's actually been revealed. I'm not sure it has no. been, but, you know, uh, Lapras definitely has a lot of, uh, a lot of ways to. A lot of viability. Uh, what a, what a, 
A lot of ways to play. A lot of ways to play. A lot, a lot. Speaking of another Gigantamax Pokemon that we haven't really seen, yep. Alcremy, which uh, Fevzi yes. has been rocking this tournament, yes. um, is something that uh, you know I really wanted to see quite a lot of coming into this tournament. Sure. It's Gigantamax move, G Max Finale is a really powerful way to play. But enough about that. Enough about we that. We have team preview here. We're yep. going into game two. Game two. And take it away with the teams, Costa. Yes, of course. So we will once again run through the teams real quick. We do have Incineroar, um, uh, Alcremi, Al damn it, Ben. It's Al <laughs> Alcremi, not Alcremi. Alcremi. Okay, Alcremi, Alcremi Dustclops, Targetis, Tintelda, Lapras, and we have on Matty's side the Durant, Milotic, Toracat, Tyranitar, Gothitelle, Sylveon. Yes, that is a Toracat. Indeed. <laughs> so uh, speaking of ways to be able to effectively deal with that Sylveon, of course, we saw in l yesterday's stream Fevzi using that Alcremy. Yep. Alcremy, in fact. There we go. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get <laughs> we'll there. We'll get there. Uh, <laughs> Alcremy uh, had access to uh, both Decorate, and uh, it's, which is its signature move, yep. raises the attack and special attack of its target by yes. two stages each. So it's like having a weakness policy of your own. Basically. You know, you can just yeah. uh, decorate all of your uh, your uh, <laughs> partner Pokemon. Yeah. Make sure they're looking nice and pretty. Exactly. But also doing as much damage as possible. Uh, so <laughs> maybe in combination with the Togekiss or the Lapras on Fevzi's side of the field, yeah. maybe that's enough to start picking up the KO on Sylveon on Matty's side of the field. We'll have to see. We are yes. going into game turn two. one of game two. Oh yeah, here we go. So um, this is gonna be really interesting. I am very curious on what leads we are actually going to be semi uh, seeing coming up from both of our players. Um, we do see the uh, Tyranitar and Sylveon once again coming out from Matty's side and the Dustclops and Lapras coming out from Fevzi's. So no change up in this game, uh, both Fevzi and Matty deciding to do exactly the same thing as before. Uh, the question is, is whether we're going to see a difference in play, uh, whether that Lapras is going to go straight for that Gigantamax form again, mm -hmm. whether Sylveon is going to go for the Yawn again, or maybe start to set up the damage with that Throat Spray, uh, and whether the Trick Room is going to come up this turn or not. Yeah, so actually something that I did think about right now, um, uh, Matty does have the possibility of self-procking his Weakness Policy Tyranta with Quick Attack coming out from Sylveon. So what happens if he decides to Dynamax his Tyranitar to be able to deal huge amounts of damage both on either Dustclops or Lapras, whether one uh, does G-Max or not. And even if Incineral does come in, he has that option of maybe completely deleting it from this game. Uh, indeed, and it could be such a strong play. Uh, we're not going to see Dustclops go down this no. turn, though, switching out for Incineroar. Yeah, so Incineroar does swap out for the um, Dustclops' slot. We do see Intimidate, of course, coming out onto Matty's end, onto his Pokemon, of course, and we see a Protect coming out from the Lapras on Fevzi's side, maybe in anticipation of any moves. Do we see the self-proc? We do yeah, actually see it. I just go. called it out. Love it. Um, so we actually see the self-procking strat coming out from Matty. Very, very smart. We, uh, due to the quick attack onto the Tyranitar. Tyranitar does actually reveal the rock slide once again. And what kind of damage will this deal? Wow, Ooh. that is so, so close. Yeah. And does actually proc the Incineroar's berry right now is it a fig it is a figgy berry right now and of course um uh, uh sylveon lapras and incineral are gonna get some residual damage done from the sandstorm Absolutely brilliant play there from Matty, making sure he gets that weakness policy off. Of course, in the same way as yep. game one, deciding to go for that rock slide, knowing that Incineroar may come in. Of course, if the Dusclops stays in and is on the field, tries to set that trick room, yep. there is always the chance of that flinch coming out from the rock slide. Very so, true. you know, covering a few different bases there, but that amount of damage coming off on the Incineroar probably puts it in range for a, definitely another rock slide, yes. but potentially a hyper voice as well. So, so very true. Um, we do actually see our first Dynamax of the game come out from that Lapras on Fevzi's side. So right now, Fevzi is wanting to be able to get his Aurora Veil up while saying, listen, I do not want my Lapras right now taking that sort of damage from that plus one rock slide from Tita. We do see the Fake Out coming up from Incineroar. 
into Matty Sylveon being able to flinch it for this current turn. And a G Max Resonance coming out first before the Tyranitar on Matty's end, being able to deal a lot, a good chunk of chip damage as well, let's say, onto the Sylveon. Of course, Sylveon is uh, usually much more trained and bulkier in the special defensive side. And we see the Rock Slide coming out, being able to pick up the KO on Fevzi's Incineroar, and also being able to do a good chunk of damage as well onto Fevzi's G Max Lapras. Yeah, no Yawn coming out here from the Sylveon so far. Uh, maybe it'll come out next turn, we'll yeah. have to see. Uh, but that Lapras has taken so much damage. Incineroar is now off the field, and that's Fevzi's main source of intimidating Tyranitar on Matty's side. And of course, that, that Tyranitar at one plus uh, stages of attack. Uh, so, uh, you know, Conkelder, Conkelder coming in for Fevzi is going to be absolutely crucial Very. in making sure that Tyranitar doesn't completely run away with the game here. Yeah. Uh, but Tyranitar, uh, sorry, Conkelder is going to have to worry about that Sylveon on the field. Uh, G Max Resonance from Rapplus not quite enough to pick up the KO from this range without another critical hit like yep. he got in game one. So, you know, a, a little bit of a, a mix of things going on here. Uh, it may be that Matty decides that he wants that Tyranitar to be preserved in the same way. Uh -huh. uh, maybe use it in the same way that he did last game and make sure that Sand is consistently on the field. Yeah. Uh, chipping away at Fevzi's team and making sure that they're constantly lowering their health. Exactly. So we do actually see the Tita, uh, the Tyranitar, sorry, do come out from, uh, switch out, sorry, from Matty's end for the Gothitelle and um, being able to exert potential fake out damage, uh, fake out uh, options for the next turn. We do see a Detect coming out from Kinkelda on Fevzi's side and a G Max Geyser from the Lapras into Sylveon being able to pick up the KO and also reset. Wow, with another critical hit. Of <laughs> course, it was a critical hit. Wow, that was very, very solid play. Uh, and really, really fortunate for Fevzi. And also, of course, getting rid of the sand uh, temporarily, should I say, uh, for the rain because we could potentially see uh, Tyranitar come out now. But no, we see the Duran instead coming out, also still having Dynamax available to it. It does indeed, and uh, neither Kinkeldor or Lapras are going to be able to switch out now that the Gothitelle is on the field. And of course, yep. uh, Kinkeldor going for the Detect that turn, protecting himself from the Hyper Voice. So, uh, you know, maybe Sylveon being uh, not quite KO'd uh, would have put it back in Mac Punch range. And it, this may actually be the little bit of positive momentum yep. that Matty needed to get that Durant and Gothitelle in for free yep. um, and set up this board position where Durant can go for that Dynamax again, uh, start launching out those big Max Steel Spikes, uh, maybe with a helping hand uh, addition from that Gothitelle that we saw last turn. And Ooh, there it is. There There's it is. the G-Max. This Durant uh, is going to be going into its Dynamax form here. Uh, and starting to dish out some major damage. Major, major damage, Ben. And uh, I mean, right now, I think Matty is, it, it's, of course, Aurora Veil is still set up from Fevzi's side, um, but Durant does, is well known for being able to dish out a lot of damage, but not for this turn. We do see a Max Guard coming out from both <laughs> Dynamax <laughs> Durant and uh, Gigantamax Lapras. The Fake Out does come out onto the Kinkelda, so I do believe Matty might have been wanting a bit of a stalemate for this turn, and I actually think he got it. He did indeed. Uh, just making sure that that Lapras is going back into its normal form. Uh, quite key that Lapras goes down in this game, of course, for Matty to uh, win the game. But uh, the biggest target here that I see is that Kinkelda for Matty. So, yep. you know, how does uh, is Fevzi able to protect it? Uh, or not in that uh, wow. in the case Lapras. of that Lapras. Lapras did try to go for the double protect. It didn't get it. And unfortunately for Fevzi, the Durant does pick up the KO straight onto the Lapras with its Max Lightning, uh, probably powered off of the Thunderfang, being able to set up electric terrain. So Lapras going down. Um, of course, uh, Durant getting Life Orb recoil. We do see a Psychic coming out from Duftel, being able to deal uh, enough damage to put the Kinkelda just a bit above half of its HP, and we see a Thunder Punch coming out from Kinkelda into the Durant, being able to deal relatively okay damage. Yeah, it's quite quite good damage, of course, boosted by that electric terrain yep. set up by Max Lightning coming out from the Durant. Uh, we see the Dust Clops coming back into the field, and the Cassie Berry and Life Orb yep. yet again are being frisked, so no new information there for Fevzi, and uh, now it's a case of, uh, does the Kinkelda protect or does it not? 
Yeah. Uh, that's the real key for this turn. Uh, Matty's going to have to decide if he wants to try to uh, maybe launch a helping hand boosted Max Steel Spike into the Dusclops, maybe try and pick up the KO. Yeah. Likely need a critical hit yes. to get through that Very true. Aurora Veil uh, and deal enough damage to the Dusclops. Or does he try to maybe uh, do the same into Kinkelda? Even if Kinkelda goes for that Detect, there is a little bit of extra damage that goes through Detect uh, from these max moves coming out. Yeah. Uh, so maybe Ooh. putting it in range of another attack. Exactly, and we do actually see the Helping Hand, just like you mentioned, Ben, come out from the Jothatel uh, into the Duran to help its partner out. And we do see the Detect coming out from Kinkelda. Does this Max Steel Spike go into Kinkelda? Yes, it does. Wow, it actually deals around roughly 50 HP. Um, that's a lot of damage even through Protect, to be honest, uh, whilst also increasing its defense and Gothitelle's most importantly, because right now the main threat coming out from Fevzi's side Ooh. is this Contelta, but we actually see a Nightshade come we out from do. Dusclops into Duran, not even trying to set up its Trick Room, potentially fearing Gothitelle. Well, potentially. I mean, we saw some Trick Room mind games yesterday, <laughs> yeah. uh, and this is exactly what I think Fevzi was going for, thinking that the Gothitelle uh, and Durant weren't able to reliably t uh, take down the Dusclops, so uh, Fevzi thinking that maybe Matty was going to go for a Trick Room to counter Trick Ooh. Room, uh, oh. unfortunately didn't get it off. No, and we actually see the double detect come out from Contelda uh, successfully, and an Iron Head hit into the Durant, being able to chip away uh, Dusclops' uh, damn uh, HP, sorry, just a bit more. Psychic does come out into the Dusclops, but into the Contelda's second detect, whilst Dusclops does get the Trick Room off. Indeed, so uh, a great turn there for Fevzi, absolutely playing to his outs there, yep. making sure that that Kinkelda uh, lasts into Trick Room and is able to maybe get a Drain Punch off. Of course, there is the option for Dusclops to go for a side uh, Pain Split yes. in this turn, so uh, maybe giving away some of the HP that it's got already uh, might be able to recover a little bit more than Drain Punch, but of course, you know, the time is ticking away and that Durant is something that... Uh, Fevzi is going to really want to remove from the field. Very true. We did actually see Fevzi opt for the uh, side pain split yesterday as well, which was a very, very solid play, to be honest, because he was able to make his Dusclops actually uh, survive and its longevity increase. And we actually do see that come out. What a call, Ben. Um, <laughs> that is really, really solid. Is it able to take out the Durant? Yes, of course it is able to. Boosted by that Life Orb as well. Even if it is a critical hit, I... Although, how how defense how many defense boosts? Oh, it was just only the one, one defense just boost. one. Just so one. I think he still should have been able to take it out. Um, uh, don't quote me though. Um, <laughs> so uh, Kinkelda actually receive is on the receiving end of that sidekick from the Dothatel, being able to pick up the KO most crucially for Matty right now, and Dusclops is facing a Gothatel and a Tyranitar. Indeed, so uh, going to be a bit of an uphill struggle there for Matty. Of course, he does have the pain split to yes. keep his health high, uh, but that <laughs> that's only based on his opponents having HP as well, and of yep. course, uh, only having access to that Nightshade. Uh, going to have to, at some point, reset the Trick Room. There's only a few more turns of Trick Room left before it expires, and both Gothitelle yep. and Tyranitar will be the fastest things on the field. So not looking great here for Fevzi no. or that uh, Dusclops. Wow, but we do actually see the pain split come out from the Dusclops into the Dothtel, being able to recover some HP. And the crunch coming up from that Tyranitar, being able to deal quite a good chunk of damage whilst the Dothtel does reset Trick Room. Yeah, Matty correctly identifying that uh, Dusclops would need to go for a pain split that turn to make sure that it was still healthy enough. And we just see there the Aurora Veil does wear off. So that crunch did quite a bit oh, of damage oh, oh. before. It's yeah. going to be doing more now. So much. And we've seen that helping hand coming out from the yes. Gothitelle already. So uh, likely that will be game there. Wow. As forfeit. And your winner from wow. your top eight round is Matty Morgan. He's going to be going on to top four. Congratulations, Matty. Matty. Um, and we will, uh, what, a, what a great game from both players. Wow, I mean, that was such a good set. I'm sorry. I, I just really, <laughs> no, I just really enjoyed seeing that. It was just so many really solid plays coming out from both players whilst also being, showing so much knowledge and understanding of the board position and mm. their win conditions as well. So trying to understand and figure out what is my opponent going to do so he can try to stop what I'm going to do. And yeah. a lot of that play going on back and forth. And it was just incredible. I oh, really enjoyed it. Absolutely. And every, yeah. every time we see these sort of trick room mind games going on. So, you know, players sometimes opt for 
a trick room orientated strategy, but yep. some players, the other players that may be going for a slightly faster build, mm -hmm. uh, builds like Matty's team where they want to be the fastest thing on the field and yep. uh, maybe going first instead of setting up that trick room to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, do still have that trick room option just to reverse it. And that's exactly sure. what we saw Matty uh, do so masterfully. I think two or three times we saw him ma manage to so. successfully reverse yep. the trick room. And of course, uh, late in that game, we had that pivotal moment where uh, the nightshade came out from <laughs> Dusclops and uh, yeah. there was no trick room on the field and that's exactly what Fevzi needed at that time. I think so because that that was just like you mentioned mind games mind games <laughs> mind games we Absolutely. saw quite a few yesterday we saw a bit today as well and this is just the beginning of the day too isn't it? Uh, exactly um, and this is exactly what you expect to see in the top cut in day two yes. these high level plays exactly as you said Costa the understanding of the board positions yep. and making sure that they know exactly what they need to do and just quickly before we go to a mm -hmm. break yes that that switch into tyranitar at the end of, <laughs> at the end of game one yeah uh, plays like that for matty were just so crucial yep. um and so clever to do um but speaking of breaks we're going to go to a short one now uh, we'll be back in just a moment with your winner from the top eight round matty morgan
just yeah. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. So, um, countdown whenever you're ready. Uh, always happens. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our top eight streamed feature match. We do have Matty Morgan over here, the winner of the top eight uh, match against Fevzi Ozkan. Tell me, Matty, was that as intense as it looked? I've said it, that it was time. very, very intense. Yeah. Like my heart was racing. Oh. It, was, oh, it was really tough. Yeah. Like when I went home, I fought like I was really hard. I yeah. was happy to cut my first regional, mm -hmm. and like I was like, anything else is a bonus. Ah, that's so solid. I mean, and the way that you've been able to do it too. Like, I mean, that set honestly was just. It was there's a lot of strategy and board positioning understanding yeah. going on in that. So, like, I mean, how how do you feel like it went matchup wise? Maybe with you, like with the strategy what was your general strategy about it. Okay, so yesterday we played in round eight, mm -hmm. and he two owed me. Yeah. Oh wow, did you? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Wow, fair play. So you're able to actually yeah. learn from that. It was, yeah, like I led Dino, I led Durant mm -hmm. Lapras, or yeah. Durant Goffitel no in his Dust Claps Lapras. Yeah, so you got Lapras too. Yeah. <laughs> and like his Dynamax sort of beat mine out because mm -hmm. he would set up Veil and then he'd be too bulky. Yeah. So when I went home, I realized I need to preserve my Dynamax mm -hmm. for when he's a bit weakened and yeah. then I can clean up with Durant. Fair enough. So, so yeah. yeah, so you actually put some good thought into it because I mean, quite good that you were able to <laughs> go against him yesterday, though, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. because he is a really good player on top of it as well. So you were able to find out your a solid strategy, make it, you know, like work on it a bit last night too, yeah. and go into today fresh, saying, okay, well, I'm just gonna try to stick to my plan. I kind of formulated what I should kind of do and all that. But solid, solid showing. So I mean, is there like one moment or like one strategic moment you think that really helped you during the set like maybe like push momentum into your side or was it solid throughout um turn one went mm -hmm. pretty well on both games yep. I the yawn was great like i didn't i don't think i revealed yawn yesterday so like mm -hmm. i knew like turn one game on if he led that i was going to click rock side yawn okay fair i was just trying to like deal consistent damage so yep. i could clean up with durant and like the yawn is pivotal like Sure. He doesn't have max lightning, which yeah. I knew. And we did actually, oh, fair enough, a bit of, oh, yeah, you knew because yeah. of yesterday, yeah. So we did actually see the um, turn two sw uh, switch out from the yeah. Lapras too. So I agree with that play, yeah. yeah. Because it was the main kind of strategy from Fevzi Zen was to try to just get his Aurora Veil up, maybe try to get Trick Room up safely, maybe yeah. with Dusk Lops as well after that too, which is, once again, solid. It was a strategic plan, but obviously we saw that, unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to take advantage of two additional turns of his G-Max yeah. too. So do you think that proved to be quite pivotal That as well? was massive, yeah, because Max Geyser, it's not like the strongest mm -hmm. Dynamax, yes. but like it still will start like two hit KOing stuff, and yeah. the damage is just... I need to make the right trades. It's very true, because he could also set up the rain as well. Yeah, he? exactly. So he could, because Get that would go sand. against your sand, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, what about that critical hit? Do you think um, it mattered? It probably did. Probably it might did. have been a roll. Okay. But I think it was pretty safe. But yeah. like it got me an extra turn of Dynamax, mm -hmm. essentially, because I would have went for Quake and who's in Cinero to KO it next turn. Fair. Uh, but instead, I got. I think I got an extra KO. I'm yeah. not exactly sure because uh -huh. of that crit. I mean, it was solid. I mean, that's that's the uh, name of the game, isn't yeah. it? Sometimes, <laughs> like, I mean, you could have made a read, like you said, like with the match. Yeah, like I thought it was after. coming, but yeah. if the read went wrong, it yeah. was far worse than mm -hmm. if I steel spiked the incineroar. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I mean, that's fair. I mean, either way, you were able to get that extra plus one of defense too. You just mm -hmm. further boosting your own uh, two Pokemon as well, yes. aren't you? Yeah. Perfect. So I mean. Game two, uh, what do you think about that? How'd that go? Um, like, I predicted him not to not to let him get yawned again. Mm -hmm. So I just, like, quick attack myself to get weakness policy, just yeah. deal more damage. Yeah. It was more risky than my turn one play mm -hmm. last game, but I was a bit afraid of, like, Alcremie coming in as uh, well as Sweet yeah. I didn't think. Yeah. But, like, there was always that 
Possibility. Possibility. Yeah. But uh, he did actually do the same turn, I believe, as um, uh, game one, didn't he? No, he protected. Oh, no, yeah. he protected. That's right. He protected the Lapras, but he did switch in his Incineroar, yeah, actually. Yeah. So you're able to deal a lot did, like, of damage. 80, yeah. You basically two hit KO'd it, yeah. didn't you? So, I mean, that was really solid as well. We did see that self procking quick attack, yeah. <laughs> Tyranitar <laughs> technique, and I really, really loved it when I saw it going off as well. And, I mean, you were able to, after that point, kind of like wear the game down and put it into your position, bring your Drothel in, reverse the trick room, and say, listen, it's Durant time. Yes. This is what I've been waiting for, mm -hmm. and it's just going to try to run through your team. And it did eventually. Yeah. So it was really, really solid play. You have been really good. Like, I mean, so far, it did really well yesterday. You went six and two. You top cut. Seventh seed, Thanks. I believe. Is that yep. seventh seed? Yeah. Yep. So perfect. You went up against second seed. Really strong display, honestly. Um, top four, congrats. Thank Huge you. congrats. And um, just moving up forwards, we wish you the best in top four. Thank you so much for the Thanks interview so as well. Much. Really, really solid play. And we're going to cut up until our, I believe, top four. Uh, streamed feature match will be next so please stay tuned in uh, very soon should I say thank you <laughs> <laughs>